Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Johnny. Welcome to Hobby Weekly Market Chat. Hey, Ben, how are you doing? Hey, Johnny. Hi, everybody. Uh, good to see you guys again、uh, every Wednesday. So yeah, and let's wish you a happy New Year in Chinese New Year.、Uh, yeah, we're having a holiday next week, so probably we we're gonna see you next、uh, after next week. So、uh, today in this episode, we are going to、uh, dive deep into. Some interesting topics. For example, we have macro update. We're gonna cover the PPI data releasing very freshly、uh, later on, maybe half half hour later, right? Half hour later. Yeah. So we're gonna、yeah. we're gonna watch that data, and that's important. We cover that later. And also, we we're gonna touch into we're gonna touch on some stable coin.、Uh, Ben's gonna gonna talk discuss with us, and for my side, I'm going to. Um, introduce pr- some 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 winners of Prime Wolf、uh, to you guys, and later on, if we have time, and then I'm gonna do some、uh, trend analysis because the recent market pump is very crazy, right? I think a lot of people hate it because、um, some I, I think some people were very bearish on the on the market, and and you know the recent pump was just very artificial. It felt artificial and not very natural, and. Um and after some findings, I I I found out that that there's just some 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 suspicious things that I can share with you, and this very thought provoking, and that, let's talk about it later. So, but before all of that, um, uh, we're gonna talk about Prime Vault, right? Because、uh, Hobby Exchange, um, we we list tokens that are popular, and um, we would like to actually involve Hobby users. When it when it comes to、uh, selecting some popular tokens, popular projects to list on our exchange, right? So、uh, usually, we allow users to do voting by pledging your HT. So make sure you get an account first on Ho- on Hobby, right? Hobby Exchange, and then if you want to vote some projects, actually we have a list every time we do a prime vote. I think there will be around twenty projects. And then you can check whether the projects you like it, which one you like, and then you're gonna pledge your HT, your Hobby tokens, and then you can vote. Make sure you 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 have your account first. So I'm gonna introduce.、Um, I'm gonna talk about the second round of this prime vote, and which just happened in、um, January. January, the second week of January. So wait a minute. Let me just share my screen. And I'm gonna, you know, uh, get to the page here. So in the second round, the winner was BBC, Boo BBC Club. So um, we're gonna introduce the project to you guys later on, and let's see why it's so popular. And we have a lot of votes there actually. You can check out um, uh, you can check out this later. If you voted, you go to support. Section on Hobby website, and then go to check the、uh, Prime Vote Round Two winner. And congratulations to those who voted BBC because you'll be rewarded with some uh, uh, with some tokens in the in the in the Prime Pool, right? So、uh, we actually had a lot of votes. So make sure if you are interested in these projects. So maybe they 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 don't get listed this time, but maybe they will get listed next time, right? They they will get involved in voting next time. So make sure you check out. The next round yet to be released. Stay tuned to our official Twitter website, and yeah, I I I think I'm gonna vote next time too because I I think I like you know the the pure project, but you know let's talk about it later. We're we're gonna focus on you know the the winner of this time, BBC. Hey Ben, what's so, what's so special about BBC Blue BTC Club? What do you、uh, think about、uh, it? Uh, maybe can let me share my screen. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna stop sharing first. Okay. Go ahead, Ben. Okay. Can、uh, you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Boo PDC Club, uh, is a hash rate service platform integrating Bitcoin hash rate distribution. So, I think recently we have been talking about uh, you no know, hash rate, right, Johnny? So that、yeah. that that's like uh, the core 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 network which uses like. You know the standard yeah, call down. Sensor. Yeah, definitely. So they the same thing. They uses this a、uh, Bitcoin hash rate, and but this uh, Bitcoin hash rate is in a way 
is very different is uh, it incorporated uh, NFT as well. So oh. if you look, oh. it, yeah, it, it's pretty, it's, it's, I think it's a pretty interesting, uh, uh, I think project because they, they categorize a lot from what I read is they categorize like, no, the Bitcoin hash rate via like this T. Right. So yep. it can buy an NFT, uh, for this three T hash rate. But, uh, for 350, 350 USDT. So you get the three T hash rate and uh, you can you know, contribute to uh mining or uh, find mining Bitcoin. So this is okay. uh what the uh, the network is trying to do. So there are, there are several ways that you can actually uh you know get this uh this NFT. Each NFT has different uh T, right? So there's like uh three different types for now. So that is uh SSR. So this SSR is uh I would say is uh ten T. So ten T ten T is like the highest hash rate for this for all for any NFT. So that's why it's the SSR. And you can get this via you know uh this mystery box where you can use five of these uh uh NFT. So this is uh the lowest tier, which is the R. Uh, NFT, right? You use five of it plus around 599 BBC to actually uh, mint one of this mystery token, which gives you a chance to actually get either one of these three. Okay. Then, uh, okay. yeah. Let's, let's kill it then. Hash port. Hash port. Yeah. Yeah. So from there, you know, if you get the highest, uh, SSR, which is 10T, then congratulations, you, you know, you get higher, highest power to actually mine more of this BDC. And not only that, you can actually, uh, you know, uh, do liquidity, pro uh, and be become a liquidity provider through, uh, package swap. You know, you, uh, you take your BBC and your CT to actually, uh, contribute to this liquidity mining. Then there's other as well. So, then they have other projects like, you know, the Genesis, uh, where you can uh, get, you know, different NFT with uh, different hash power. So, so yeah, uh, for more information, you can visit their website for yeah. BDC Book Club. Uh, not only that, you can actually, uh, although for B doesn't have uh, NFT marketplace, but uh, I think it's our fiduciary duty to let you guys know also that, uh, uh other platform has, uh, NFT marketplace where you can buy uh, this BBC, uh, NFT as well. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Thanks, for more man. information, just, you know, visit that with Twitter and most importantly, for any kind of investment, please uh, do your own reading. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to my screen. Uh, just, just a moment. And, okay. And, and also one more thing is, uh, like we also look at fundamentals, like how popular BBC is, uh, why it managed to win. Uh, uh, you know, this time board is also because of the number of followers, uh, number of fans they have for this for this project. So if you see, like, uh, BBC has around almost more almost like two hundred sixty k followers on Twitter. Then on Telegram, they have like uh, you know, forty k members on Discord. They have fifty seven k members. So this was the reason why BBC won uh the time board, and you know, this can be one of the uh, factors you actually factor in when you know you want to vote for those co uh, projects that you support for. Yeah, that's all for me. Uh, pass on to Johnny. Yep. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That's very, very cool. Right, um, yeah. So make sure to check out Prime Vote and also I, I hope you select your, your favorite project next time you get it listed and you trade it. I hope it helps. And uh, let's dive into market right now. And um, before we, we talk about some macro updates and also news update and also the PPI later on, let's look at how, how market's doing right now. So let me sh share my screen, okay? Yep. Wait a minute. Okay, so uh, let's look at Bitcoin first, okay? And we're now trading at um, 21K. Wow, okay. Sorry. Wait a minute. Let me just switch to here. And now we are standing at 21K, which is very bullish looking. You know, before we were trading within the trading range, I think that's 
um, around uh, 15K, somewhere 15K to uh, 18K. And then we broke out of the range. That was probably an accumulation shown. And then we now reaching almost 20, 22K. But let's see if we can break this resistance here and try to flip it into support. But, you know, I'm highly suspicious. And actually, um, I, I would like to you know, just head on to X, DXY and see how it's doing right now. So DXY, previously, we had a very strong, not strong, actually, the very obvious uh, 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 resistance and support line. But, you know, we just broke it and came all the way down. And we are now DXY at 101. And then... If the XY drops so much, okay, all the way from um, that's a uh, hundred and something, and then, but it's it's actually not very very obvious when it comes to uh, Bitcoin's price action relative to to the XY, right? Because and because usually when the XY drops, we're expecting crypto to pump, but we are not seeing that kind of correlation right now, and you know, starting from here. DXY drop in and then and then Bitcoin is not doing very well as well. Um, wait a minute. So here, DXY all the way down from 100, uh, 114 to now trading 100. And then we just had a pump here and that's not very obvious relative to the DXY, DXY's drop. But let me just share is, um, uh, some of my findings lately. I'm going to switch to... Wait a minute. Let's switch here. This one coin lines. Okay. That's a um, you know, a helpful website because you can check open interest, funding way, liquidations, and other statistics about Bitcoin and Ethereum and other other coins as well, other tokens. But what's important here is I, I want to say that um it's looking very suspicious for the USD um, for the Bitcoin to BUSD trading pair. Okay, see that Bitcoin to BUSD BUS trading pair. That's the yellow line here. I uh, no, 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 I mean the blue line here, right? Okay, so for other trading pairs, let's look at other trading pairs like USDT, USD on other big exchanges, for example, Bitfinex, Bitstamp. And then you have Polonix and then and then also Binance. These trading pairs are actually not in an aggressive buying volume. So what CVD is saying, CVD is accumulating volume delta. So what it says is it measures the delta of aggressive buy and sell orders. So uh, they, we have the accumulated volume here. So obviously the blue line is going up, right? Accordingly, with correspondingly with the uptrend in BTC, we saw uh, in, in this week and last week. So this trading pair is BUSD. So what I'm saying is uh, the pump was probably driven by some big wells on Binance because they, they are trading on the BTC to BUSD pair. That's around 30% um, pump all the way from uh, 16K to 21K, that's around 30% pump. So um, it's very obvious, right? BUSD, BTC trading pair. So what I'm, what I'm doubting is actually, uh, maybe it's easier, we don't know, but some wells on Binance, they initiated the pump. And there were actually a lot of liquidation. So if we check Glassnode, okay, I'm gonna share some um liquidation data with you guys so uh wait a minute so we have the futures long liquidation no i'm like actually i would like to look at short right total short liquidation you see that and you know massive really massive so That's a recent crazy. pump was hated <laughs> all right Benz, you check it out the short yeah. liquidation no oh, that's crazy man and it's it's just on um on on Binance, Bitmax, and OKX. And okay, so when's yeah. the last time? When's the last time there's such a big liquidation? Okay, so we're gonna zoom out the timeline. The last time we had this big liquidation back in um the pump. Last, and, yeah. yeah, the last last bull run we had in 2021. <laughs> 
that's very interesting, right? Because at that yeah. time, I remember people were desperate here, somewhere around there, because we were trading so uh, around maybe 28K, people were so bearish. And then the pump, they thought it was a dead cap bounce and they didn't believe the pump. I, I think it's kind of similar here. Um, uh, very, very interesting and definitely going to watch um the cumulative volume delta and see one thing I want to confirm. So if if this is healthy, if this is bullish, I want to see other trading pairs CVD going up too, not just USD, right? I would like to see yeah. some pull up action. Yeah. And one I more thing, I okay. One more thing, then uh to see whether this pump is driven by will demand or not. We're gonna actually look at exchanges, and then if the pump was really healthy, it was real demand, and then we're gonna see uh, exchange withdrawals at all time high, right? Because people would like to take away the Bitcoin they purchase on exchanges after you know the FTX collapse, and we learned the lesson. So therefore, um, I'm expecting to see some big withdrawals here. So uh, wait a minute. Exchange withdrawals outflow volume. Let's check this one. Okay, wait a minute. So I'm gonna drag this timeline in a bigger one. So not much, right? BDC. Yeah. Not much. Not much. What I want to see is withdrawal activities comparing, you know, comparable to what we saw in and and maybe in here somewhere here 2020 yeah yeah and if we check the album volume exchange our volume total let's check this one um not very obvious the outflow right because you know when we back in 2021 and in september you know that pump we actually had a very big withdrawal out of exchanges because that was driven by you know people who really wanted to hold the Bitcoin and they wanted to take the Bitcoin out of exchange and keep it in their cold wallet or personal wallet or, or hot a hot wallet just out of exchanges and we're gonna see some big withdrawals here but not 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 here right not here yeah. so yeah definitely you know an interesting thing to watch out so make sure you you pay attention to the cvd here first the species actually would like to see confirmation other trading pairs going up as well not just busd because it's very obvious maybe it's easy one to liquidate all of the other short positions and you know just take the money yeah. and <laughs> yeah. yeah they want to have a short squeeze you know for all the for all the subdivisions right where yeah yeah, when they pump, then uh, they you know have a, a a quick profit for those who I would say I would say it's like market manipulation. It might be you know what spending or something like that. But and yeah, totally that, no market manipulations. Maybe the whales <laughs> just had too much money. <laughs> They're gonna yeah. buy, but the price went up so much. It's no manipulation. It's just real demand, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's one thing I also you know want to. Want to share is uh, just yeah. give me a minute. Uh, want to share is the uh this one. So we are talking about you know whether there's real demand, whether there's no new entrance into the crypto scene. We see that okay. you know for the past one month, yeah, you know, the whole market cap of all stable coins has been flat throughout. Right, means that you know during this one month, there is no people coming in. There's nobody buying stable coins. Yeah. And who is actually driving the demand, right? And this make it makes this pump very suspicious because it doesn't create a real demand for people buying uh you know crypto crypto assets. Uh this uh I have the same I have the same you know uh same thinking as you Johnny is is this uh pump over the last one week it's it's pretty suspicious. And yeah. I don't think, uh, uh, I mean, we have been talking about, you know, uh, like for the past maybe one, two weeks, you know, uh, the Fed fever, we're talking about, you know, uh, the reverse repo and all the metrics that, you know, it's, it might be a good time to start, you know, uh, DCA 
uh, buying some uh, because we don't know when the bull run will actually start, right? Uh, yeah. But you know, this time, it might be, it, you know, we, people say that, you know, this bull run came early, but uh, I think we still have to be very cautious, you know, with our money right here. Right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, hmm. you know, talking about stable coin, I, I, I'd like to suggest one more metrics, okay, on Coin Gla on Glassnode, so. Okay, uh, yeah. okay. Uh, let me share it. Yeah. Thanks, actually, you just showed us the, uh, uh, the this the market cap of stablecoin no change right? Yeah, totally no change. No change. Um, wait a minute. Let me just get back to my Firefox because I want to share another metrics with you guys. So here, actually, I want to share another metrics called uh the stablecoin supply ratio. I don't know if I talked about it before uh, i don't remember but that one's a a good good word ssr is called yes stable coin supply ratio so can you see that can you see my screen can you yep. see the screen Vince? so every yep. time you know we have the uh something like the here because we that that's actually the standard deviation of the original stable coin supply curve here the, the orange line so uh two standard ration deviation away when it touches lower band usually it means the bottom when it when it reaches you know the top of the the band and then it it usually means you know topping distribution so um you know i'm I'm just gonna co uh, relate to what you said the stable coin uh market cap and this one's also another helpful useful one for you guys to check out it's, it's actually approaching to the upper band as well which means that uh the state the stable coins are supply right now is actually mm, comparing to the uh, bitcoin market cap is not very healthy so we, we're not seeing a pump when we approach the top the, the ssr approaches the top okay so another metrics that you can check out on cloud on, on, on glass note that one is, uh, I think, is helpful because it measures it measures the Bitcoin market cap to stablecoin market cap, and uh, when it touches the lower band, which means that a lot of stablecoin ready to pump the market when it reaches the top, not much stablecoin to 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 initiate some aggressive buy or buy buying of Bitcoin and other other cryptos. So yeah, you should check out this one. It's and, like it's like that. So exactly real demand for for yeah. Bitcoin, right? Yeah, hmm. yeah, and you know, for um, let's let's just wrap up uh the the market trend analysis here. I think we should move on to some other interesting topic, right? Because uh, last night I don't know if any of you listened to our Twitter space with uh the BD listing manager uh Sean from Polynix, and we had a very good conversation about Coidal. And fans, I think we are uh, hoping it's going to list core, and um, and people could actually deposit core token. And uh, for some of you who were who who spotted the issue that you know the minimum deposit was around one thousand core tokens, it has it, it it was fixed already. So you can deposit minimum of five core tokens onto Hobby Exchange. So. Uh, let's yeah. get to you know the key points talking about core. Why people are so uh so obsessed with core dow you know why people are talking about core dow it actually has some gimmicks and if you read if you read their white paper you're gonna find something interesting okay so uh it's very popular right now uh, also pi network but let's just focus on the core core dow okay the core token here Actually, I want to solve the, the typical blockchain, trinamer, decentralization, scalability, and also security. They, they brought out something called the Satoshi Plus consensus, which uh, leverages the, the hash power of Bitcoin, and they want to leverage the security uh, offered by Bitcoin's proof of work, and they're going to uh, offer some good security and also good scalability using delegated proof of stake. And that's very interesting. 
and definitely can't wait to see um they go they go their main egg on go live and then let's see their blockchain data and see if 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 it's healthy many people using it and then we're gonna check the data later yeah right Vince. right so, so yeah so well, i think one thing about cordell events i think the the very uh the most important thing about cordell is um uh, real people can use their phone to actually stake their car tokens or mine their mine more car tokens to actually, using their phone i think that's the most important thing so yeah, yeah. that, that one's to, also very good yeah so for you to actually do that you must have this uh, satoshi app that uh it works on android phone uh but not for iphone right so for for <laughs> this i think a lot of people uh is very uh I mean, there's all people who can use it because, you know, uh, the narrative of like, you know, mining is your phone and Web3 incorporate everything together and with you no know, proof of stake and proof of stake of Ethereum where you can delegate and stake, uh, call tokens and proof of work from big, big coins to actually mine call tokens. It's like, you know, uh, even people on the streets can actually do that using a phone. I think. This is one of the main reasons why it's so popular. So if you look at their Twitter, they have more than a million yeah. followers. I mean, you know, yeah. for a project with more than a million followers, is, I mean, um, the hype will, will be there, you know. Yeah. And uh, I think you mentioned, uh, you know, call down uh, for what we had, we had started deposit, uh, deposit. So initially it was 1,000. And yeah. because we had this AMA yesterday, uh, a lot of this, committee members they feedback, you know, one thousand is too much because most people yeah. have around a hundred, like those early participants. Yeah. So we lower down to you know five core. So yeah. right now I think the major exchanges like uh four B uh and uh, I think uh MEXD and uh OKX has started uh deposits, but four B is the first one to actually you know uh, notice this call up project and we have been I would say uh communicating actively with the developers. So, uh, yeah, we are waiting for the deposits to reach, uh, a certain threshold before we start trading because, you know, uh, we need a liquidity to actually start, uh, this, uh, spot, uh, pad on our, our exchange for, uh, for, I mean, risk management or for our traders as well, and for exchange as well to make, you know, things safe. So, yeah, I think, uh, Cordell should be, you know, listing, uh, soon. Uh, I have no exact date, but, you know, we are still waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And another big thing why people are talking about Core DAO is that they wanted to solve uh, Bitcoin miners uh, problem because when Bitcoin uh, block halving one day is going to finish because uh, all Bitcoin will be mined eventually, all Bitcoins will be mined eventually. And uh, what about miners rewards? And the Core DAO want to actually reward them for uh, for using the, the 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 project right and that's another big thing they want to achieve people are talking about it whether they can do it or not whether they can achieve it or not that's a good thing people are building under the bear market and yeah wrapping up go check out uh core DAO and also uh if you have some core you mine some core if you want to train it just deposit to you know deposit to hobby and then get started okay I bet. I think we are now almost nine thirty, and then we have some important economic data coming out. Would you like to take over and you know just brief us over the PPI expectation and whether it will, you know, come out hard or you know, yeah, go yeah. ahead, Vince. Okay, just uh, I do a quick recap of uh, sure. what this uh, uh current market uh I'm using investing or something because it's the what the I would say the fastest to actually come out any street. So yeah. anybody can actually use investing.com to do this. It's not commercial anyway. Okay. So firstly, I think right now the whole US market is looking at this uh, Q4 earnings. So uh, I think for last week or earlier this week, uh, the Q4 earnings for major banks has, uh, came up. So, you know, JP Morgan, uh, Bank of America, uh, actually, uh, beat expectation, but Wells Fargo, uh, wasn't, was, uh, earnings were disappointing. You know, this one of the reason why uh past few days uh especially Dow Jones wasn't uh, performing well uh 
However, for tech stocks, I think for tech and S and P five hundred and Nasdaq, I mean, uh, is pretty flat. I think because you know they have and they have fallen so much since uh since last year. So I think for growth stock wise, uh, I think it's still it's still um I would say it's still relatively flat and should not pose much uh much I mean mm, risk uh after like you know so many aggressive rate hikes. Yeah. So so right now is um so right now I think uh a lot of uh investors are you know there's this conflict between investors where uh people are looking forward to this uh US yield curve. Uh I zoom into this, right? Because for this is uh if you look at this yield curve, right? Uh people are looking like the maturity uh within like six months. Right. Maturity within six months is, uh, they expect like the yield, the interest rates will actually come down from the peak after six months. So, uh, people are very bullish, uh, for US stock because, you know, they will be, uh, look, uh, passive interest rate decrease is good for the, uh, for equities, right? However, if there's another, another side is, uh, on this, uh, uh, the believers of the dot plot. Right. So for the dot plot wise, uh, sorry, for dot plot wise, um, sometimes, okay. So for dot plot wise, uh, the consensus is that, you know, for 2023, the, the, this, this dot plot is from the, uh, uh, Fed, right. So the consensus is the interest rate will still maintain at around 5% for 2023. So, so there's two, there's two, there's two like conflicting parties that are, uh, fighting one another. So, uh, however, right now, if we look at the probabilities of the next, uh, hike in, uh, in, I think, two weeks' time, uh, there's a 92.2% of a 25 basis point hike, right? So, right, currently, the market right now is expecting two, uh, 25 basis point hikes. And, however, if you look at, uh, May, right, that's a t- almost a 30% for another 25 uh, basis point hike. Likewise for the one in June, August. So, uh, so uh, this is a period where, uh, the market is, I would say, uh, conflicted. So I think we have to c- still continue monitor, uh, moving forward. Yeah. Okay. So next, uh, let me cover, uh, what, uh, what is going to happen this week. So earlier today, for CPI, uh, for Europe, uh, came in. So it actually, uh, I would say, uh, meet expectation of 5.2%, which is good. And it's seen from, uh, last month's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, CPI year on year, the non-core one. It also came in, uh, a meeting expectation, uh, lower than last month's, uh, 10.1%, which is good for, for the Europe side. I think it's quite good for the rest of the world as well. Now, right now is okay. So PPI result just came in. Core PPI year on year came in 5.5%, lower than expectation and lower than previous, uh, last month is 0.2%. So right now, if you see, usually we, how we interpret a PPI is if it's above expectation, right? We would add it more bullish for USD. If it's lower than expectation, it's more bearish for USD. So, uh, if we look at, uh, the DXY, uh, it's loading right now. Uh, we will, we will assume, right, uh, the PPI, uh, which came in lower than expected. Is it? It's lower than expected. Yeah, right? just, ju- just dumped. Yeah. It just, it just dumped. Yeah, we just dumped DXY. Yeah. I think the DXY just came in. Okay. So, yeah, you see, that, that's it. That is dumped in the DXY. So actually, it. However, we still have to look. Even though we know that you know it will it will actually dump. But however, uh, you know there are, there may be other uh, noises that come in later during the day, which actually sometimes will will not follow the narrative of uh if it's above, it would be uh foolish and be a barrier. So so uh still when you when you trade, you still have to look at the market as well. So yeah. I think for the rest of the week, uh, there's not much news. Uh, there's a 
FOMC bottom uh bottom six picks later in twenty five minutes time at ten eight ten p.m. Uh, later will be the Bullard speech in one hour time. Uh, next is other on the FOMC members. I think this week is a lot of uh, speech by by this FOMC member because um uh, there is one week of blackout period before the FOMC meeting in on first of um uh, February, which is next the following Wednesday. So I think yeah. a lot of FOMC members are here to actually uh give them give the market their their take on what they're gonna talk about uh in this next FOMC meeting. So we have to keep in mind uh, like keep look at what are they actually uh talking about and see whether it you know really really makes sense to some of us. I think next is the continuing jobless claim. Every week we still follow this, right? Um uh, I think that's all for this week. And I think for, for next week wise, um, uh, I think this is the most, one of the most important is, uh, US, uh, US, uh, GDP, Q4 GDP, uh, GDP results gonna come out. So yeah. expectation is 2.8%, right? Uh, I think, uh, previously, I think in Q3, I think Q4, Q4 last year, uh, Q3 result was, uh, was like almost 0% negative. So I think right now, uh, US GDP is, I think, slowly improving, which I think is, uh, comforting for the market for now. Yeah. I think the most important is next Friday on the 27th. So yeah. this is, uh, December's, uh, core PC and PC price index. So, uh, for PC price, I, uh, the matrix that we usually use is, uh, PC is personal consumption index, right? So yeah. how we look at it is, uh, this 5.5%, we compare it with the increase in hourly wages or increase in wages for another matrix. I think it came out like two weeks or last week. First. So, uh, we, we can look at it, uh, maybe you no, know, when you are, you guys are free, can look at it. So what we want, for for the US the CPI to be deflationary is when the uh, PCE is more than the no the hourly to be higher than the PCE. So because people are spending more, uh it increased inflation, right? We call this inflationary pressures for you know because uh demand outweighs the size. So I think uh for P we need to make sure that PCE is lower than uh, hourly wages. And actually, we actually want both of them to go down, to be honest. Yeah. I think uh, that's all for me. Uh, move on to Johnny. He's, I think he's going to share some uh, chat as well. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Spence, for, you know, covering the market news and also the, we just had the, the PPI, right? And yeah. That's great. Make sure you stay tuned to next week's core PC. That will be a, a the important data coming out next week, and also the GDP data. And right now we have some time left, and I, actually I want to share some of my research findings lately. So wait a minute. I'm gonna share my screen here. Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, um, I just I just um, wrote a research paper, you know, find finding out how the Fed's balance sheets components affect the crypto market, and that's in my opinion. I think that's an important thing when 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 it comes to trading and also investing in crypto. Um, so I'm I'm just you know highlight some important findings here, and give. An overall outlook of how will crypto look like in 2023. Okay, so uh, first of all, I, I'm gonna um, look into how crypto was pumped in 2020. Okay, so back in 2020, we had two things, which caused the big pump in crypto. So first, we we all know, right, the QE. So how it happened? The Federal Reserve inflated the balance sheet. 
from four trillion to almost eight point five nine trillion, and that's almost a double. And they inflated the balance sheet, and therefore they created money, and the money was circulated into the economy. People were, uh, uh, were flooded with excess money. The bank deposits all time high, lending and borrowing activities were so easy at that time. Plus, the second thing, the the cheap yield, right, the low yield. The yield was very low in uh, across twenty twenty, from March to to twenty twenty one. Exceptionally low yields caused people to spend the money instead of saving them in the bank. And at that time, remember in 2020, we had a DeFi summer, uh, the big boom in DeFi, because DeFi was offering a better yield than, than what a bank is offering to most people. And therefore, yeah. people, you know, just exchange their their um, their currencies into stable coins, USD, USDC, USD, and they stake their tokens on, on DeFi, right? Whether they 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 got to land it or they just take it and earn rewards is is much better than 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 people putting in the bank, saving the bank because the bank were giving so less yield, almost zero sub zero yield, right? And overall, in my opinion, I think these two things triggered the crypto pump and also the DeFi summer, which was very, you know, I, I would say phenomenal, and. Whether we are going to see another pump like this depends on whether the Fed's gonna not just cut rates, okay, but they're gonna inject money into the market. So we, I actually want to see they're doing something like this, not just lowering rates to sub zero levels, but also, but also inflate the balance sheet again, creating new money into the into the economy, right? So rates are coming down right now. No, no, I, I mean, not, not, not the federal funds rate, but, but just the yields, okay? The two-year and also 10-year treasury yields are coming down. And, uh, but we're still hanging somewhere around 4%. And that's already higher than most of what DeFi can offer to, to, to people when it comes to staking. For example, in, in most of the uh, um, um, as, um, pools on Curve and Aave with uh, less risk, Less risky stable coins like USDT and USDC. If you stake them, and then you you only get maybe two to three percent, and that's not as high as what the Fed and also banks are offering. They're offering somewhere forty five percent, and and then you know that's the difference. Okay, so we are now in a bearish market because you know why people are going to put money in in crypto. No no reason, right? There's no easy money now. We're gonna just uh hold and also invest in some nice protocols, hoping them they outperform the other market. We are we can only do this thing, right? So yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. I think, I think because it's like right now interest rate is so high, you know, four point five. I think four point five percent, right? So it's it's free money for for most for investors, right? And those investors that actually right now in crypto is because uh. Maybe they most of their money are, are in like fixed assets, fixed income. So they want to diversify out to other other assets. And uh, we we don't really see major withdrawals of you know uh, stable coins. But uh, that that's why not many people are coming in. I think yeah. this could be one of the reasons why. Yeah. And right, and also the reverse repo award rate. You know, we talk about reverse repo. We talk we talk a lot about reverse repo. Me and Ben's always talk about reverse repo because it's the most important important metrics to, to watch out if you want to trade and invest in crypto. Because reverse repo is the investment safe haven for most of the investors. It's offering four percent yield, four point four point five percent yield overnight. Uh, risk riskless, I would say, zero risk because it's offered by the Federal Reserve. You can put money in reverse repo and you get reward, get the interest rate offered by the Federal Reserve. And that's actually one thing because people would just prefer stick, uh, parking the money with reverse repo instead of sticking into DeFi, right? And there's no point to invest in risky, risky, risky assets when when some riskless asset like reverse repo is offering almost 4.5% yields to investors, that's phenomenal. Okay. So, uh, the reverse repo going up all the way, uh, from 2021 May 
And that that thing, that increase, that uptrend was actually siphoning money away from crypto market. You can see the uh positive uh, the, the, the inverse correlation of reverse repo to Bitcoin market and also Nasdaq and also Ethereum, right? The reason why crypto topped in in 2021 November, but not when the reverse repo went up, not not here in not turn over May, but a half year later was because uh the TGA, the Treasury General account, actually this is a bank account of the US. They spend money, they they receive tax and tax was deposited in this account. They use the TGA account to fund government deposits, whether it's for uh salaries or other other spending, they use this account. So when they spend this account down and then they're gonna release money into the, they're gonna circulate money back into the economy. So this one actually offsets the effect of reverse repo is doing to the market. So we are actually seeing QT quantitative tightening really happen in, in 2020, uh, the end of 2021. Okay, so that's another thing. And, you know, um, knowing the relationship between the Federal Reserve balance sheet and the components, reverse repo, TGA relative to the crypto and also risky assets, we can actually look at the inverted RLP index. That's that that one actually tr tracks the market pretty well. It actually indicates the liquidity in the market, whether it's doing good, whether it's doing badly. You know, this one is good. And for most of the time, you know what big change in the inverted reverse repo um will indicate the trend of the market. So if we first report is going up strongly in an uptrend. Market's going down. So a strong shift in reverse repo can indicate change or momentum in risky assets, the trend of risky assets, and that's one thing you can look. So um I'm gonna actually gonna publish this report uh, later on because still have something to amend. And yeah, that's actually what I want to share with you guys. But uh, right now, the economy is not good, we all know, and the liquidity is not good as well. QT is on the way, RP is all time high, you know, absorbing money from the market. But let's not be so desperate and let's not be so bearish because when we look at some price models of Bitcoin, we're actually at historical cheap value. We're, 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 we just entered the capitulation zone, it happened every four years. Last time we had is 2019. Now we have 2023 capitulation zone where the price dipped below most of the traders' cost basis. So a lot of people in the market are losing money. So what it means? It means that um, people can actually buy in cheaply. And it's it actually is the best time to buy when people panic sell, right? And also if you check yeah. the yeah, yeah, go ahead, Ben. Uh, so I think the market like the capitulation is more like uh the sellers are forced to sell, right? They are forced to liquidate their assets. So uh that's a very good period for actually buyers to come in to actually sweep to be a low price, right? Right, Johnny. I think you're mute. Johnny, you are mute. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I muted. Hey, Johnny, yeah. you're on mute. Yeah. yeah. You know what I said? We just climbed back up above the uh, short term holder cost basis. The purple line, we just climbed back up. But, but you know, long term holders are still losing money. So, uh, short term holders actually can acquire cheap bitcoins right now. And I, I, I believe right. they're doing it right now. Right. And, you know, the CBDD yeah. has been respected has been respected several times. This is a good one for uh, Bitcoin's base level reference, but you know, who knows, we'll have some final ultimate big dumb capitulation coming, maybe it's easy, go bankrupt, something like that. You know, who knows, but take your own risk and you know, <laughs> not financial advice though, just uh, some interesting analysis here. So uh, if everything goes well, no more capitulation, no more black swan. I believe this is the bottom. Okay. 
So uh, we have back macro, but Bitcoin's pointing, you know, historical cheap zone capitulation zone. So what what will twenty twenty three look like? I think we we'll, I think we will spend most of the time in twenty twenty three hanging around twenty k to twenty five k, or maybe a, a we visit a few times back to the trading range of sixteen uh, k to twenty k, and that's a long period of accumulation, and I believe this is the likely outcome. And um, you know, just my opinion, and also check out the uh Bitcoin cycles comparison. Where uh, now, if we compare each cycle since every halving, you know, now we are now just entered the value zone. We're now almost approaching uh 900 and also 1000 day for each halving cycle. You know, this zone 800 to 1000 days usually spot the the bottom bottom formation each cycle so that's really interesting if we look at bitcoin at a four year cycles timeline we're also at a capitulation zone historical value zone with regards to you know four years timing 2013 to 2016 2017 to 2020 2021 to november yeah we are we're not we're right now here it's actually you know uh, the best sport for accumulation not financial advice though <laughs> No, so in my opinion, 2023 crypto will be hanging around uh, a trading range, accumulation range, unless Fed is gonna pivot very hardly and they print money again, turn back on the printing money machine, and lowering yields to you know maybe lower than what DeFi is offering. We're gonna see crypto coming back very soon if that happens. Okay, that's the case. So. Yeah, and that and that's that's what I want to share with you guys. And let's see, Benz, you you want to um add something, add anything? What do you think about it? Hmm, I think uh th this report has not been published yet, right? Not yet published. Yeah, still private. Okay. So what's the ETA for this report? What? Pardon? What's the ETA for this report? Again, what? sorry. Uh, what, what did you say? What? I didn't catch question. Uh, what is the ETA for this report? When will it be released? Um, I think maybe in early February. Because okay. um, we're having a holiday next week, New Year, New Year, Chinese New Year, New Year, and people are taking a holiday, and I'm I'm rest I'm taking rest as well. So uh, actually, I have something to amend. I'm gonna actually look into CPI and also Fed funds relationship, and I'm gonna plot mm. plot into a graph and see what we can find out. Probably got to yeah, release I, the report in early February. I I think it's really interesting. It's like you know you try to maybe incorporate like ten different signals signals into maybe one report to actually you know give uh our readers uh, more information of how to actually you know I would say time the market but rather uh yeah. know when is a good time to actually start you know start the investing strategy for crypto assets. I, I think, think uh. Mm. Yeah, but then I, I I just said, you know, timing market is, you know, not the best thing to do, but definitely interesting, <laughs> from my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I I think Johnny, we still have to go through one more topic, which is the KRRX. Sure. Thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. KRRX. That 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 one's interesting because people are talking about it, and. Let me just share my screen and and let's see if we can visit their website. What you heard about KRR expense? Uh, personally, I I only I knew that it's 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 gonna be listed today, right? Right. People can it, trade it on Hobby later on eighteenth. Yeah. I think it's eighteenth in general. Maybe tomorrow. Uh today. Sorry, today. So it's it's actually a today. you know. I, yeah, what what's up? It's already it's already traded at, uh on uh, be like uh at eight PM earlier. Oh yeah, no, I no, think really? it's yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, 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 yesterday eight PM it was out of B. So uh I think prices uh it's still it's still new, I think it's accumulating. So yeah, uh, I think Johnny uh can do a brief introduction of this project. Yeah, sure. Actually, it's 
you know, I think it's something like、uh, a platform offering trading plus some financial services to people, and uh, uh, it offers investment solutions, payment and financial solutions to to retail and also institutions. You know, bridging the gap between bank and crypto through the provision of comprehensive set of products and services. So basically, like platforms, I I think it's uh somewhat like something like Gemini, a crypto, um, I I would say maybe a middleman bridging, um,、uh, traditional finance and also uh Web three finance, and the tokenomics, they have a supply of. Uh, five hundred million, and tokens in circulation also five hundred million, and then make sure you watch how the price for early investors is fifty cents, and um, you know, also usually in the first few days, trading will be very aggr uh will be very uh vigorous and also uh aggressive in the first few days. People are gonna speculate, and then make sure you take your own risk, set a stop loss if you wanna have fun trading. I wish you, you know, good luck, and also, you know, um, if you're a long-term investor, go check out their, uh, white paper, learn how they manage their business, um, yeah, and I hope hopefully they they're doing better than Gemlin, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it's more like you know, it's it's like a, and it's it's more like a financial services、uh, yeah. project that uh you know use. Uh, classic market、uh, trading technology with combination、yeah. of like high tech exchange and professional trading platform. So it's like you no know, giving the best、uh, kind of trading experience for traders, you know.、Yeah. And I think they have、uh, you know this uh, ongoing uh, activity with Huobi, which is you know if you want to trade、uh, KRX on Huobi.、Uh, And you might get a bonus of, uh, with a price pool of fifty thousand KRX token. So this, uh, one of the collaboration、uh, with KRX. And、uh, I think most importantly is、uh, KRX is on a、uh, Tron as well. So Tron is extremely, I mean, the gas is extremely、uh, cheap, and、uh, I think it's very affordable for, uh, for people or traders like us who always like seek. Uh, low low trading fees, and currently I think this project is still uh, I would uh, it's still pretty I would say uh, it's pretty new, um, with a、uh, Twitter followers of around twenty nine thousand, right? So uh, for this I think we have to still uh look uh closely on、uh, what kind of、uh, product they actually offer, uh, because I think for for a new project uh they can't. Uh, offer many trading pairs for the trading platform, right? So I think currently I'm looking at their website. It's like I think they have more than ten trading pairs. I think most of them are, uh, I think they have around ten trading pairs. Most of them are like blue chips. Oh, actually they have more. Okay, I think they have like uh about twenty of it, twenty of it. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's somewhat very similar to Gemini because they have the earn program. You can stake your coins onto on Carex and then earn some rewards. Yeah, but this、uh, I think this company is uh, I think they deal with OTC. Uh, yeah, I think uh for KRX, if you wish to invest in KRX, uh, to look into uh what uh what what product they offer, what technology they offer, and also most importantly, do your own reading. Yeah, yeah, do your own research, buddies, and. If you have any questions or you you want us to cover any other interesting topics, comment down below. I'm gonna check it later. So I think、yep. um, we we cover a lot of stuff today, and and、um, I think that's、uh, we, we we that's the end of today's sharing. And and、uh, thank you for listening. Ben, would you like? Yeah. You, you want to want to say something? Hmm. Nah, I think I think we reached the end of today's session. So thank you, Johnny, for you know hosting co-hosting with, with me together、uh, every Wednesday. So yeah, yeah,、mm-hmm. and most importantly, happy Chinese New Year to everybody. Because、yes. I think Johnny and I would won't be、uh, having a show to next week. So 
Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna pause one week. Next week we we won't do a weekly market share. We're taking a holiday, and then yeah. we come back two weeks later. Yeah. So for this week, for this week, just listen to uh the, what the Fed officials uh is gonna talk about, and maybe you can discuss it maybe in two weeks time. Yeah. Yeah. Watch how they manipulate money. Okay. <laughs> So um, oh, yeah, yeah. We, on 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 our next um weekly market chat will be on the first of February, which is the day of the FOMC meeting. So it'll be very okay, interesting. Very cool. Yeah. We're gonna cover that. Roger that. Copy that. So yep. uh yeah. See you guys okay. in, uh see you guys in February. See you. Wish you happy bye bye. New Year. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye. Happy Lunar Year, bye bye.